Joe Gantz, born Joseph Gant, was an American professional boxer. Gantz was rated the greatest lightweight boxer of all time by boxing historian and Ring Magazine founder, Nat Fleischer. Known as the Old Master, he became the first African-American world boxing champion of the 20th century, reigning continuously as world lightweight champion from 1902 to 1908, defending the title 15 times versus 13 boxers. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. Gantz started boxing professionally in early 1891. Starting in Baltimore, he gained many fans within the boxing world, both white and black alike, with his scientific approach to fighting. Unlike the more brutish and adrenaline-fueled fighting styles more prevalent in the time, Gantz's fighting method involved learning an opponent's strengths and weaknesses to compete with a game plan. He fought through much adversity and unfair stipulations for certain fights. On three separate occasions in 1895, he had to fight an extra round after going the distance. In a fight versus Johnny Van Heest, Gantz had Van Heest whipped to a standstill in the eighth round, but Mr. Daniel Carr, the referee, ordered an extra round. Though Van Heest had none the best of the last round, he was given the decision. Against Bobby Dobbs, Gantz had to stop Dobbs in 10 rounds or get the loser's end of the purse, 25% and also had to pay Dobbs $50 for every round after 10th that the latter was able to stay. Dobbs asked his seconds to throw up the sponge in the middle of the 14th round, claiming a sore hand. Dobbs was down repeatedly, either from knockdowns or going down on his own. In the fight with Buddy King in 1903, they fought in the drizzling rain. A slender man, never weighing over 137 pounds, Gantz frequently fought heavier boxers, thus adding to the legend of his scientific fighting technique. He became known as a true student of the sport, earning him the nickname Old Master. On January 7, 1895, after knocking out Samuel Allen in three rounds, Allen's second, Bud Brown, immediately challenged to fight Gantz. Not backing down from a fight, Gantz accepted, and outpointed Brown in a 10-round points decision. On March 3, 1900, at the Broadway Athletic Club in New York, Gantz quit with an eye injury in the 12th round and lost via TKO while challenging lightweight champion Frank Hearn in Gantz's first title fight. However, in their rematch two years later at International AC, Fort Erie, Canada, Gantz knocked Hearn out in one round to convincingly take the world lightweight title. In the exchange, Gantz got both hands to head, and Hearn seemed a trifle dazed. Gantz felt him out with a left shove to the face, drawing blood to nose. Hearn seemed dazed, and Gantz rushed, and exchanged, putting right plump on Hearn's jaw. Ern fell slowly to the floor with his mouth, and nose bleeding, rolled over on his stomach, and was counted out before he could attempt to regain his feet. Wire report, Gantz had thus become the first ever African-American boxing champion, he had also become the first black title holder since the Canadian-born, George Dixon won the Bantamweight world title in 1892, and the island-born Barbados Joe Walcott won the world welterweight title on December 18, 1901. Gantz reigned as champion from 1902 to 1908. On January 6, 1902, Gantz defeated the former world welterweight champion Canadian-born Eddie Connolly. Connolly lost in a five-round bout at the Washington Sports Club in Philadelphia. One reporter noted that Connolly did nothing but hug and wrestle, adding variety to his performance in the third by deliberately trying to butt the Baltimorean, Gantz. The reporter also noted that Connolly clinched frequently and wrestled rather than boxed probably to protect himself from the fierce assaults of Gantz. By the time the referee ended the bout in the fifth, Connolly had been rendered practically helpless by the powerful punching of Gantz. Gantz also defended his lightweight world title against other talented boxers such as Steve Crosby and Gus Gardner. There was also Charlie Seeger, Kid McPartland, Ruth Turner, Charles Elbows McFadden, and Frank Hearn. In an important title defense, he defeated the durable Dane Oscar battling Nelson in 42 rounds on September 3, 1906, in Goldfield, Nevada. This blockbuster fight, arranged by legendary promoter Tex Record, would eventually be honored with a historic memorial. On September 15, 1905, Gantz fought to a 15-round pre-arranged draw with future welterweight world championship claimant Mike Twin Sullivan. Most people reporting on the fights believed that Sullivan deserved the decision. In an immediate rematch, he defeated Sullivan by knockout on January 19 and March 17, 1906, in San Francisco and Los Angeles, and again in March of the same year. Although recorded as a welterweight title match, 
and the bout supposedly had a weight limit set at around 142 pounds, which was estimated to be Sullivan's weigh-in. Gaunt's weigh-in was estimated to have been 7 or 8 pounds lighter. Gaunt's defeat of the heavier Sullivan, a strong puncher by reputation, showed his mastery in the ring. In this well-attended bout, Gaunt's share of the gate was a considerable $2,425.20, and Sullivan's was $1,616.80. Gantz reportedly had bet another $1,700 on himself, which, if accurate, made his earnings on the fight quite considerable. Gantz, and battling Nelson fought for the world lightweight title twice in Colma, California, first on July 4, and September 9, 1908. Gantz lost the first fight by KO in the 17th round of 45, ending his multi-year reign, and subsequently lost the immediate rematch by a KO in the 21st round of 45. On September 30, 1904, Gantz fought to a 20-round draw against Barbados' Joe Walcott. The San Francisco Chronicle reported that Walcott damaged ligaments in his left arm, and that it was useless from the fourth round on. It was announced before the fight that no title was at stake. Referee Jack Welch gave seven rounds to Gantz, five to Walcott, with eight even, but thought that Walcott's aggressiveness compensated Gantz's advantage in cleverness. Shortly after this fight Walcott accidentally shot himself in the hand, and was out of action until January 1906. Joe Gantz died on August 10, 1910 of tuberculosis, at the age of 35. He is buried in Mount Auburn Cemetery, Baltimore, Maryland, in Baltimore. His monument is maintained by the International Boxing Commission, and sits just to the left of the main entrance of the cemetery. It reads, I was born in the city of Baltimore in the year 1874, and it might be well to state at this time that my right name is Joseph Gant, not Gantz. However, when I became an object of newspaper publicity, some reporter made a mistake, and my name appeared as Joe Gantz, and as Joe Gantz it remained ever since. Gantz had a final professional record of 145 wins with 100 knockouts, 10 losses, 16 draws, 6 no contests, and 19 no decisions, newspaper decisions, 13-2-4. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. A bronze statue of Joe Gantz stands in the suite floor at Madison Square Garden but was previously outside of the locker rooms. Modern-day boxers would traditionally bump the statue's outstretched left fist for good luck before matches. Gantz's legendary fight on September 3, 1906 with Battling Nelson was commemorated with a memorial located in Goldfield, Nevada at the site of the fight. Gantz was the first African-American to win a World Boxing Championship, and the first to win a lightweight boxing title. Gantz's achievements not only set new records, but gave African Americans hope in the early 20th century. In a time of racial segregation, champion Joe Gantz somehow emerged victorious. Gantz was rated the greatest lightweight boxer of all time by boxing historian, and Ring Magazine founder, Nat Fleischer. One boxing historian writes about Gantz saying, through his ring accomplishments, Gantz put into action what others could only theorize. The articulation of the black quest for social equality reached large audiences through the pulpits, and the most authoritative sermons were published in newspapers, and religious quarterlies. The Gantz Nelson battle in Colma, California was the subject of a four-reel motion picture that played in major cities around the country. Ernest Hemingway utilized Joe Gantz as a character in his 1916 short story A Matter of Color. This early story set the stage for Hemingway's famous 1927 parable The Killers. All information in this section is derived from BoxRec, unless otherwise stated. Gantz has a professional record of 197 fights, with 157 wins, 12 losses, 19 draws, and 6 no contests.